All right, what's up guys? Today I am finally gonna talk about Tailwind. I am not a true front-end guy. I do mostly back-end work, but from the sort of front-end stuff I've been doing later, out of necessity mostly, I have really found that Tailwind is the best way of doing it. So, my friends are CSS purists. They write all custom CSS for everything. All Everything in InsiderBiz, my company's site, is all just massive custom CSS. And it works, and they do a really good job with it. And for our specific use case, it kind of works due to the heavy emphasis on SVGs and that kind of thing. But I want to show you a head-to-head -head example of why Tailwind really is a much better choice in 2022 and for the future. In this world of component-based JavaScript frameworks, Tailwind is going to make your life a lot easier, and it's going to lead to... You know, when you go back and look at a piece of code in six months, 12 months, two years, whatever, it's going to be readable. You're going to be able to see what it does instantly instead of just having to go back through and re-derive what you actually did. So I'm going to show you an example of that that I built out here. I just made a new little remix app and I created two virtually identical cards. Colors and spacing are slightly off, but I just didn't really feel like going through all the Tailwind docs and transpiling the exact, like, uh, whatever properties that it implements. So I created this. I'll show you the code for that. Break it down. Um, but before I get into that, I just want to say, again, all of November, we've got something new coming every single day. Please subscribe to get uh, notifications for that. If you have any suggestions for stuff for me to cover, put it down below. I'm always looking for new stuff. I'm very comfortable with Go, TypeScript, startups, frameworks, Whatever you want, let me know, and I will try and fit it in. So right here, I just created a new Remix app. Um, I'm sort of on a Remix kick right now. I really like it. Um, but anyways, I created this, and I set up these two components. I made a Tailwind card and a CSS card. So what you see right here is Tailwind card, CSS card. And let me show you what the code looks like on each of these. So this is the Tailwind card. If you had never seen this code base before, no idea what was going on, you can almost instantly figure out exactly what this is doing if you've used Tailwind before. If we look at this, we can see, okay, so we have a white background, medium shadow, we've got rounded corners, we have a max width of small, uh, padding, padding, very simple stuff. You can instantly see, oh, okay, that makes sense. I get what this sort of card is gonna look like. Then let's contrast this with the CSS card. All we get is card. So, okay, it's a card, but what does that mean? So now if you're looking at this code base and when you're writing it immediately, yeah, you know what card is, but then in two weeks, you're gonna have no earthly idea what card means. So it's like, okay, well, I don't know what card is. So let's go into my app.css and let's, okay, so here's card. So now I can see what it has. So let me pull this up to the side. So now I have to go through my uh, CSS card and let's go each class. So my card heading, now I have to cross-reference it over here. Okay, it has this and this. And in this tiny little example, this really isn't that bad. I mean. There's nothing too difficult about just going one to one, but then what happens when this app.css turns into a 1500 line CSS file with classes that span across 10 different pages and written by five different devs? I can tell you from experience that Insider Viz, we have multiple CSS files that are several thousand lines long. I don't know what the hell is going on in any of them, and I'm never probably going to because it's unreadable, it's unusable, but then when we look at this tailwind, you know what this means. I know what MB means. I know what text small means. I know what italic means. It just makes sense. So this wouldn't really work in a traditional HTML page sort of world because what we get with React and with these component-based frameworks like Vue, React, Angular, so on and so forth, is we get these reusable components and they're very small chunks of code which we can then include into another file. So if we had to take all of this in here, we had to take all of this code and copy paste it into the index, yeah, this would be a little worse because suddenly these super verbose um, class names and all that stuff gets really hard to read. But when we're looking at these components that just have 20 to 30 lines worth of code of HTML in them, they might be a lot longer, but most of that is going to then be JavaScript server-side logic or data rendering and fetching logic. The actual HTML or JSX that we're rendering, it's pretty short. So it's very maintainable and understandable to just have it all written here. I think that's the main reason why I'm switching to Tailwind, and any project I start now is going to be using Tailwind. I don't want to be writing CSS anymore. I don't want to be writing custom... Well, that's not true. 
there is a place for custom CSS, but it's in very specific niche cases where Tailwind doesn't cover it. If you need to do some really fancy animation stuff or you need to like wipe out the scroll bar or whatever you need to do, then yeah, use CSS. But for general styling and general building out of web pages, I would use Tailwind. And the reason is, as I just showed you, this is not readable. This is not understandable because you have to go back and forth between different things and you get into this workflow of control effing your way through a 1200 line CSS file and no one's happy. It slows you down, it's miserable to work with, very easy to read, very reusable. It's just great all around. So yeah, take a look at Tailwind, read through their docs, they are phenomenal. Um, as far as tutorials on how to actually use it, there's tons of great ones out there. Um, every single major JS framework has an integration, has like a quick start with Tailwind. I've been using it with Remix, so every time I need to add it, I can just double check this guide, pull it in there, easy to use, easy to get set up. So with all that said, Tailwind sounds great. It feels good. It's great for components. All that makes sense. We all know that. But then the issue then runs into, okay, what happens if I want to break a little bit out of the norms that Tailwind establishes for me? Because Tailwind gives you control over basically everything, but it gives you a color palette. It gives you specific spacing. It gives you specific fonts. How do you customize that? And what's great about Tailwind is it actually has the ability to add whatever the hell you want. So if we go in here to our theme, we can extend this theme with Let's add colors, and then let's add, um, sure, whatever Copilot recommended. We'll see what this color is. Inside of this Tailwind config, I can update the Tailwind for my project to add custom colors, custom spacing, custom whatever I want, so that now that I've added this primary color, if I want to, let's just change like my Twitter handle down here. So instead of having text gray, let's have text primary. So now we have text primary, so it ended up being that color. So if we go back to the Remix app, we can see right here, it takes that primary color. So you get the full customizability that you would get with CSS. And, and what's even better is that you also get the benefits of SAS in there because CSS variables are really powerful. And that's something my friends really leverage that heavily in Insider Viz. And if you look at our site, we have really strong design language and conventions. And that's mostly attributed to their great use of variables. All of our colors, all of our like settings, all that stuff is set with CSS variables. They have everything set up with CSS variables, which means that whenever we go to create a new button, create new text, you don't have to go through and check, okay, which hex code is it? You just say, I want dash dash text color, and it works. And Tailwind gives you that exact same functionality here, just with these custom config. And what's even cooler is you can then implement light and dark mode using this theme. So let's actually do that. So let me just show you how easy it is to actually put dark mode into your Tailwind app. So Right here, I just add to my Tailwind config dark mode class. So that means that uh, the, the dark mode is going to be dictated by a class, um, whether or not the HTML has a class of dark. So what I'm doing to illustrate dark mode is I have two different background colors for my body. So I have gray 200 and I have gray 600. So if you look right now, it has white. So it's just white on the background right now. And then now if I go in here and add to my HTML, if I add a class name of dark right here, we add this. We look back, now this is gonna have a gray background. So that's great, but then how do we actually toggle this? So the way you would toggle this is you just create a, uh, whoops, wait, toggle. So you just create a button, and then all you have to do is document dot document element dot class list dot toggle dark. So this is gonna to toggle the class of dark what on your uh, HTML. So we just hit this, it'll flip it. So now we have dark mode turning on and off, and anytime we want to implement dark mode onto a component, all we have to do is just say, is just add dark colon and then whatever we want to do. So let's go to our Tailwind card real quick and let's add dark mode to it. So let's say that for the background, we want normal white, but then in dark mode, we want to have BG, let's do uh, gray uh, 900. Let's make it really dark. So when we have dark mode, we want dark gray. So perfect. So now we've got this for our background. And now let's go in here and let's change all of our text color. So I'm going to do um, text white. So I'm going to switch all my text to white. And now suddenly we have this beautiful dark mode card whenever we have, whoops, I need to flip this to be dark text white. So that only in dark mode will we have this white text. So now if I toggle my dark mode on and off, and now with this dark mode toggle, we have the one of the more annoying things to implement in CSS. It just works. It's that easy. So yeah, uh, hopefully this gives you a good idea of Tailwind, the sort of basics. I highly recommend just invest a little bit of time, learn it. I am horrible at front-end design. I am not a designer. I am not a UI guy. And the thing that I made, um, 
And, like, I was able to build this in, like, an hour and a half or so using Tailwind. It's so easy. It's very intuitive. It makes a lot of sense. And I highly recommend learning it. It'll make your apps way easier to read, way more future-proofed. And it's also just a scaling thing. This kind of stuff, like, if you had a big team... This would scale to a big team. If you bring in more developers, they'll be able to read this versus CSS, they won't. So hopefully you learned something. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.